Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Welcome to our morning devotion. This morning, as you join us in what God is, is about to do this morning, the last day of the month of March, 31st March in the year of our Lord 2021. May God see you through. May you not be left out in what God will do in this last day of the month, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you for today, the last day in the month of March 2021. Lord, we pray that as your word come forth, may your word as it comes forth, Lord, may it, God, Touch every life that are yearning for you. May your glory be revealed. The Bible says that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. May your word come forth this morning. And may your word locate lives that are desirous, that are seeking, that are longing and yearning for you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Breathe upon us the bread of life. Reveal Jesus Christ to us once again and have your way in fullness. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our topic for today or this morning is saying, Innocent yet punished. Innocent yet punished. Our test is taken from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him on to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Are thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I found no fault in this man. And they were the more fear, saying, He stirred up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard, of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him then he questioned with him in many words but he answered him nothing and the chief priests and the scribes stood and vehemently accused him and Herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and read him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, You have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, 
I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. Ye, ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I send you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And he cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate therefore, willing to release Jesus, speak again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why, what if you have he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And we are instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Just like in today's test, and as we consider the topic, innocent yet punished. To be innocent means not guilty of a crime or an offense. When somebody is not guilty of any crime or of any offense, we can say that the person is innocent. When somebody is free from um, moral wrong, when somebody is free from all kinds of or corrupt, corrupt uh, 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 when somebody is not corrupted, that person is innocent. When somebody is not responsible for an event and yet suffering its consequences, we can say that the person is innocent. From the text we read, we can see the role of Pilate, the role of the Sanhedrin, the people that brought G the Jewish Sanhedrin. It is their, in their law that they can pronounce a verdict on any religious offense as Jewish Sanhedrin. But for that of Pilate, Pilate has the right he has the legal power to pronounce a death sentence. Outside him, this, the Jewish Sanhedrin had no power. And so they brought Jesus. We are seeing the conviction, Jesus being accused of many things, Jesus being trial, tried, and Jesus being punished for a sin he did not commit. Look at what the Bible says. Even Pilate himself submitted that this man, I found no guilt in him. This man, you are leveling this accusation, is innocent. He found no guilt in him. Pilate submitted I find no fault in this man, in verse 4. If you read the second part of it, be part of it. I find no fault in this man. And we all the more raising political accusations because them knowing that Pilate will not be impressed by a charge of blasphemy 
against their God. When they raise a charge of blasphemy against their God, a charge of blasphemy that the man Pilate, Pontius Pilate, would not be impressed. And so they brought in political accusations that we saw this man. This man refused to pay uh, uh, tithe or tax to Caesar. He refused to pay tax. And you remember when they asked Jesus the question, is it true or is it right to pay tax to Caesar? Jesus, knowing what they, 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 they were planning, said to them, bring that currency. <laughs> Let me see. Bring the, and they brought it. And he said to them, whose portrait is in this place? And they said, it's Caesar. He said to them, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. But they accused him of saying that they should not pay tax to Caesar. Bring him political things that will make Pilate to maybe take a decision to crucify Jesus. To me, it's a matter. Accusing an innocent person. And then they went further to mention that uh, even from this Galilee <laughs> to this place, and Pilate, on hearing that, wanted to know or asked them whether he is from Galilee because he falls in the jurisdiction of Herod and he was sent to Herod. When Herod heard that Jesus was coming, Herod was gladdened. I was thinking that the man was glad. Maybe he wants to receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Maybe he wants to give his life to Christ. Maybe he wants to submit to the Lordship of Jesus. That man received Jesus and molested Jesus, mocked Jesus. He missed the opportunity. He missed the privilege, the opportunity to surrender to the Lordship of the King of Kings, the Lord of hosts. He ended up with his colleagues and soldiers, mocked the, the, the King, the Messiah, the Creator of the whole world. Through him, all things were made. That man missed the opportunity. And he, he sent the Savior of the world without receiving him. He lost the opportunity. He sent him back to Pilate. And Pilate, if you take a look at verse 13, and Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I, I, having examined him, having looked into the matter, having probed into the matter, I found nothing, no fault in this man. As touching all your accusations, innocent yet punished. And they said, No. <laughs> they, they said, No. I'll crucify him, crucify him. If you read from verse 15, Pilate continued, No. Nor yet Herod. Herod could not condemn him either. Nothing worthy of death is done unto him. He said to them, I will release. I will chastise him, maybe punish him and release him. And uh, it was the custom that at the feast of Passover, they are, they are, the feast they celebrate once in a year to mark their deliverance from the hand of Egyptians. At the feast of this Passover, somebody must have to be released from prison. And so he said to them, maybe I will release him after punishing him. And they cried aloud, all saying, away with this man, release unto us Barabbas. They chose to have a criminal, armed robber. They chose to, to, to have a killer, a destroyer of destinies. They, they prefer Barabbas to Jesus. They prefer occult man. They prefer armed robber, criminal, to Jesus. What a wrong decision. 
They made that decision that was best known for them. But I tell you, all these things were happening, not because God is incapacitated. God is making a way for his children. God's plan is coming into fulfillment. Even Jesus was not moved because he confirmed that. He said to them that I will die and when I must have risen, I will come back, I will go ahead of you to Galilee as we read previously. Look at this place. Pilate therefore, willing, verse 20, to release Jesus, spake again unto them. But they cried, saying, crucify him, crucify him. Many of us are crucifying Jesus through our character today. Many of us are crucifying Jesus. Look at the people. Look at the, the crowd saying, crucify him. People, they said, Hosanna in the highest. Few days ago, they are saying, crucify him. People, they said, Hosanna in the highest. Glory be to God in the highest. The same voice is now saying crucify him. The same life that started with Jesus is drawing back. The same life that received Jesus as Lord and Savior and is firing, was firing in evangelism, was firing in raising leaders, youth, is now compromising his faith. What a failure. Pilate could not take a decision. The pilot that has all it takes to save Jesus. Pilate that has all it takes to say no, that this man is innocent. Decided to go to dance to the tune of their will. Well, I may not blame him because that was to fulfill what the scripture says. He was crucified. They, they preferred the armed robber to Jesus. What are you doing today? Are you preferring those that are against the church, against the will of God? Do you relate with them? Do you, do you, do, do you have relationship with them rather than having relationship with God? These people that said Hosanna in the highest are now saying crucify him. Do you know what it means to say that the, the, the Savior of the world, the one that performed miracles, even Herod confirmed he had so many miracles that he did. No wrong was found in him, yet he was punished. It's very painful that a man who did no wrong will be, will be, will be in sorrow because of me, will be in sorrow because of you, will be in sorrow because of my, 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 my sinfulness, my sinful life. And what happened? They took him. The Bible says, and he released unto them that which for sedition and murder was cast into prison. They released Barabbas and decided to kill Jesus. But I tell you, Jesus Christ decided to go the way of the cross because of me, because of you. He did no wrong. No sin was found in him. No evil, no wrong was found in him. He was and he is innocent, totally innocent, yet punished because of me, yet punished, yet died because of you. And what are you doing in response? We need to come back to him and surrender and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Look at Herod. Even Herod and Pilate, that were enemy before. Because Jesus came in contact with them, two of them became friends. Oh, look at uh, Barabbas, who was a criminal, who happened to be a criminal, a criminal, was released because Jesus came to seek, not for those who are saved, but for those who are not saved. He came to look for sinners. He came that sinners who come and return to him. He came that people who are in darkness will come to see light. Are you in darkness right now? Are you in torment? Are you in sorrow because of one sin or the other? You need to come to Jesus and say, Lord, I surrender to you. When you surrender to Jesus, Jesus Christ 
will come to you. He will come to your rescue. As you pray this morning, as you pray this day, Jesus Christ died. Not because he has no power to save himself. Be without his journey of death on the cross of Calvary, we will not be saved. Our life will be a waste. That was why he died. And so he died for my good. He died for your good. And that is why we call it Good Friday. Jesus died for my good. He died for you. He died for me that we might be saved. Are you here or hearing my voice and you are, you are not yet saved? You need to surrender to Jesus and say, Lord, come into my life. Lord, come into my life. I surrender to you. Lord, come into my life. You died for me. You suffered for me. Lord, you suffered for me. You are suffering because of me will not be in vain. Oh, Lord, I surrender to you. Lord, come into my life. I pray for somebody who is hearing my voice this morning. Oh, let yoke of the enemy be broken. I pray for you. I pray that God we locate your life wherever you are. Because Jesus Christ suffered for you. Oh, no sorrow will come near you. Because Jesus Christ was made poor, you that you might be rich. I tell you, oh, as you rise to pray this morning, oh, you will receive the goodness of the Lord. The King of Kings will come into your rescue. Oh, his death on the cross is for your benefit. You receive in fullness only if you surrender. Lord, I I pray for these ones as they surrender to you. May they receive the dew of heaven. May they receive, O oh God, the dew of heaven. May they receive, O oh God, that goodness of God. May your mercy locate them. May your grace locate them. May your favor locate them in their place of work. Lord, even in their schools, even in their families, marriages that are broken, marriages that, that are divided, may you bring them together in the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way to our rock of ages. Restore families. Restore our nation. Restore the world. Restore every nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every Every nation declare Jesus the Lord and the King of Kings, the King of the Jew, the King of the, the whole world. Let every world bow before him. Let the whole nation bow before him. Let every nation declare him the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. To alert the sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.